advertising department. Typical. One phone call all morning is the wrong number. Hello, advertising. Hello? Do you know how to use a phone, you moron? This is a busy magazine. People are desperate to get through. Is it, Mum? We've delivered all your circulars. Oh, thanks, girls. That's great. Bet there's nothing to wear. Of course there is. Help yourself, Catherine. Thanks. Is this it, Mum? I am so hungry. Yeah, so am I. But I wish that magazine had never started up again. You know, things were much more organised when your mum worked for the council. Yeah, things were more organised before my grand went to live in Jamaica. Not there, Aisha. Catherine, please, not there. Well, where then? What about your room? And that's full of furniture for your new office that you still haven't found. I wouldn't say full, Aisha. Oh, well, what's two massive desks and a filing cabinet? An ideal setup for you and Catherine to do your homework. <laughs> so sick of this. I'm sorry. Here. Sit. Catherine? No, that's all right, Miss Pinnock. I've got to get home for food. <laughs> I mean, see you tomorrow. See ya. Look. I know things have been rocky since I left the council, but once Gail finds an office... Gail? Send her out for anything. She comes back with a boyfriend. Oh, Aisha, give her some credit. She is the editor of the magazine. So why did Gran always call her Fool Fool? Gran calls everyone Fool Fool. Anyway, it makes sense. Her finding a place, I'm here drumming up business. Yeah, but she always gets the easy jobs. Running around chatting up estate agents, landlords and surveyors? I don't think so, Aisha. Hmm. Say, the easy jobs. <laughs> Anyway, once the magazine's up and running, everything will be back to normal. Promise? Mm. Yeah, I'll get to see even less of you. Oh, why don't you rent Mrs Bradley's place across the road? You could pop back to make sure you remember who I am. Aisha, your mother's moving up in the world. I don't want a crappy little house for an office. Oh, come on, bear with me a bit longer. <phone rings> Hello, Shades Magazine Advertising Department. No? the Shades magazine that went bust a year ago. We're the Shades magazine that had a little resting period. <laughs> Hang on! We do have a circulation of over 500. Hello, sir. My name is Gail. I'm the editor of Shades magazine. As my assistant was saying, we do have a circulation of 500,000 and offer businesses a guaranteed upturn in sales or your money back. Great. We'll send you details. What business is here? Cleaning windows. <laughs> Do my best. So far, I've brought in enough business to get us started. Well, never mind all that. I found us an office. Fantastic! What are we waiting for? Come on, let's go. I'm just going to pick up the keys. I'll come with you. Before that, I've got to pick up a few things from the dry cleaner. OK. Nip in for a facial, get my roots done, pop into Mark's for some undies, back here at three. Gail, have you got your priorities right? I'm giving you a few hours to tidy up this place. Ooh. I'm the voice of my mother. Since I enticed you away from a secure job to a life of danger and excitement. Have you written and told her yet? What? That you left the council. I told her I got promoted. God. <laughs> Bring you anything back? You here at three. I'll be reasonable, Bev. There's a sale on at Harvey's. Watch my lips. Three. Four. Three. Ish. Four, four. <laughs> Mrs. Pin, who is you? Here, dressed lovely as usual. Don't you remember me, Mrs. Pin? Editor of Shades. I've just been talking to Bev. She didn't say a word. It's a surprise. Make yourself useful. Oh, yes, I could see you needed help, so I left the door open. I must ask. <laughs> fool, fool. He might be worth a try. It's Bev. Wow, what a good memory you've got. I'm sorry I ran out like that, but I had to catch my last bus. What are you doing these days? <laughs> Any uh, business interests? Six kids in an overdraft. Interesting, but not interesting enough. Ah! Hello, oh, you cruel tarlation! But wait a minute. You spew skin and bone. 
I can see who have all the flesh. Mm. What happened? You turned senile. Oh. Come on, girls, don't hold back. Yes, yes. Ah. Yes. Mm. Me too, girls. What are you doing here? The hotel run out of rooms to show your mother. Hotel? Coaching Jamaica live in better condition. One too small, one too big. You should see the lunchbox, them call restaurant. <laughs> You're supposed to be in Jamaica. People can't come on holiday. Just like that? You think it's only young people can pack bag and take off? <laughs> I try ringing from the hotel, but I keep getting wrong number. Some fiesty woman called me a moron. <laughs> Mrs. Spinnock speaking. Advertising? Wrong number. What is going on in this place, Beverly? There's a fault on the line. I'm talking about how the place looks like pig pen. <laughs> and rubbish. And what is all this? It's work I brought home from the council. So they're working you hard, Beverly. Oh, Dad, you wouldn't believe. Congratulations hmm? on your promotion. Oh, that little thing. Oh, don't be modest. Tell us what you're doing. You let us say that you was a supervisor in charge of four people? Team leader supervising 16 people. Six, Mum. Assure us you're one in front of that six. I never even get a chance to read it properly. Your mother wash and press the letter and take it to show her friends. You showed your friends, Mum. Beverly, I don't say you're useless. You make a few mistakes in your life, like working for that Fool Fool magazine. Freelancing, somebody can't work for free. And you can't cook so or keep your house tidy, no wonder you're not married. <laughs> Look at the piece of rag you're wearing, take it off. What? You're deaf as well as lazy, I said take it off. Mom, I can do it. You won't, so take it off. You expect me to sweat with my finger? Aisha, get a needle and thread. Mom. Don't harass the child, Beverly. You can get it later. Oh, I'm so glad you're both here. Hope you're staying for a really long time. How long are you staying, Mum? We don't want to put you out, Beverly. We're staying here Two for... Two weeks. Have you found another hotel? <laughs> when I have a daughter in the country with half share in our house, we will stay in Aisha's room. Oh, no, you can't, because it's got two masses. It's too, it's too small. Have my room. In fact, I'll make you a nice cup of tea, cut you a slice of homemade cake and put you both to bed. What do you think we is, winter rose bush? <laughs> you have an immense tea, Beverly. I'm sorry, Dad, just common or garden British rail. Wild some for me and your father. <laughs> no bother with the cake. Last time I eat a piece of your cake, I nearly did. <laughs> when I made this one. Cut me a piece, Beverly. <laughs> Bag. I have something to give you. Oh, thanks, Mum. Kyalalo, dashi, and smoked mackerel. Do you think I was going to feed you? It was either starve or bring me one food. You know your cooking tastes bad. <laughs> you keeping up with the mortgage, Beverly? No, Mum. They're repossessing the house tomorrow. Good. I wouldn't like to see we put money in the house and you lose it. Where you keep your duster? I don't need dusting. Dust flying all over the place. What do you expect when you can't keep still? <laughs> <laughs> you see that? Your skirting board bringing on me here, fever. So nothing changed, eh? You mustn't make it yet to you. I'm not upset. She wouldn't like me to tell you this. Dad, Mum never wants you to open your mouth. For the whole year she was in Jamaica, she couldn't settle. She missed you so much. You mean she missed Aisha? Who are you? We have two goats in Jamaica, and she named them after her girls. Aisha and Beth? No, Aisha and Billy. That's what she'd have called if it was a boy. <laughs> I will make the tea. Go and talk to your mother. Hmm? Mum, please, don't do that. <laughs> Come and sit down. Tell me about Jamaica. Did Gran tell you that her nearest supermarket is six miles away from her? No. You don't need supermarket when you grow your own food, Aisha. Oh. It must be back-breaking, digging up all those yams. Oh, when you just eat it hard on your head, <laughs> your heart and everything. Are you all right, Mum? Just a little faint. The time changed, you know. One minute I was walking through palm tree, and the next I was here. Dad, Dad hurry up with that tea. Pass me bag. You, Beverly, you go. Oh. What's that? 
a little something ease the tension. <laughs> Maybe we should lie down. Maybe later. What's wrong with you? Why you don't mind your own business? <laughs> You always take your father's side. I wouldn't leave Jamaica for the world, Aisha. Don't you find it hard to settle? When I have everything that I could want, paradise! <laughs> paradise on earth. I wish you could see it, Aisha. Hill of valley, fruit tree, the sun, the sea. I tell you, if I never have a return flight date and ticket I'll read up here for, I would go back right now. It's only two weeks. You'll be back soon. My sweet. <laughs> we have a little business to start out. Business? And we might be staying a little longer. Oh, yes. Oh, that's great, Mum. But where are you going to stay? I mean, I'd love you to stay here, but the place is so tiny. Don't worry, Beverly. We have somewhere to go. Uh, here on holiday. You think we want to coop up in our house? We will go to a hotel as soon as we find one suitable. <laughs> Mum, what are you doing? You want a mint, Aisha? I never know so much people want to know you back in England. Rest yourself and come out of my business, Henry. <laughs> Rest yourself when all I could hear is you cackling in my ears? Diane, is your auntie Pinock? <laughs> yes, that's right, darling. Get your daddy for me. Gone out? I thought I'd just hear him voice. <laughs> well, tell him we read safe, and I expecting a visit on Sunday. Beverly House. See you, darling. I go and miss this little part of Jamaica, you see? Trelawney? The rumba. <laughs> I hope you never shoot off your mouth downstairs and chat my business. <laughs> miss Mark? It's me, darling. Just step off the plane. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, you can't come Sunday. What a weird word, travel fast in this country. Ask her if she know about Beverly promotion. I suppose you hear how my daughter get top job with the council. Sixteen people underneath her. <laughs> Leave where? Which magazine? Well, of course I know. I'm her mother after all. <laughs> Excuse me, Miss Mack. My jet lag catch up on me. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> Your mother's really cleaned you up, Bev. If she wasn't on holiday, I'd offer her a job at my place. I wouldn't let that stop you. Ooh, what's happening? She's staying a bit longer because she has business to sort out. Oh. We better keep our voices down. What? Because I haven't told her about the council yet. Well, tell her you hated it, so you left. It's the only thing she's been nice to me about since she got here. I'm useless at everything, but I got a good job. <laughs> <laughs> Your mum's network. She knows already, Bev. No way. Come on, let's get out of here. You're supposed to be resting. I look sick to you. <laughs> where are you going? I'm popping out to the office. Which office? The council. The council where you work? My team's waiting for its instructions. I'd better go. This time? I'm on Flexi. Flexi with the truth? <laughs> Miss Mack say you're not working at the council. How does Miss Mack know? Miss Mack is a pillar of knowledge and respectability in that council. Miss Mack know everything and everybody. Miss Mack is a tea lady. <laughs> okay. I packed up the job. I hated it. So I left. Mum, don't look like that. Instead of being chief officer of municipal waste, I am chief writer of shades. No more freelancing, a permanent job, my own desk and filing cabinet. Sound good to me. Gail, tell her about the offices. Well, open plan, L for luxury, P for prestigious. It has to be seen to be believed, Mrs. Pinnock. All right, then, let's go see it. What? what? <laughs> I said, let's go. I'll get my coat. Where you going? <laughs> Look at the office. You stand right here and looking after Aisha. You can't come. Why not? Because I don't want you to. You can't. You've been gone a year. I've coped very well, thank you. You're not coming. I don't need your help. OK? <laughs> Well, that's telling her. Excuse you, wonderful smell, ladies, but I'm trying some goat's fish tonight. Gail, are you serious? Our high-profile magazine, about 
takeaway. Oh, come on, Bev, give it a chance. I'm sure it'll be okay. You like it? <laughs> L for luxury. P for prestigious. What do you do, view by torchlight? <laughs> I'll be honest, Bev, the publisher chose it. If you weren't in an office by Monday, he was pulling out. I'm pulling out? Oh, come on, Bev, it's not that bad. And you're good at painting and things. Eh, eh. No way! Oh, come on, you know what you're like when you get going. Don't underestimate yourself. Lord Jesus! <laughs> Three pounds an hour. We need a cleaner. Oh, tell me where you come on, baby. Hang on a minute. You march into my life, order me around my own home. Now you come into my office and you tell me I'm leaving. That's the spirit, Bev. You mean you give up your good, good job at the council for this? Put your child's future in jeopardy for a dirty little room on top of a nasty little cook shop. Hey, <laughs> you rude, you know. <laughs> Sweet up, Miss Mark. All it needs is decorating. That's right. We'll bring in the professionals. Mum, don't underestimate me. Anyway, let's see the rest of this place. This is just my office. The rest? Mm. Uh, Bev. Actually, I'm in here too. <laughs> I thought you said my own office. <laughs> so where are the others gonna work? Come on, Bev. This is it. You, me, this is shades. I feel faint. <laughs> Never mind, Beverly. Miss Mack will get back your job. Your own office, nine to five, lunch and voucher, canteen, five week holiday. <laughs> Prospect security, and when you leave, you get a pension. It's a job for life. We'll take it. You did say 120 a week. One, two, or? Uh, 150. Lord Jesus! We can't afford more than 120. And we're not paying more than 50 pounds for this rat hey, hole. Mum, you're not paying Mum, keep out of this. I'll deal with it. Charles? Hey, you know the amount of people pass through here all the time, begging for this place? I could ask any price. I only doing it to help two women in distress. We weren't, so we came here. <laughs> You're a handsome man. We're thinking of doing a handsome man page. Listen, I'm a busy man. Mm -hmm. Too busy to clean the place. Look, if I don't offer one forty, if by the time I count to ten, you get that woman out of here. Mum. Stand here. Keep quiet. Not a word. Hmm. I'll deal with this. 140. Are you serious? Mm, Sometimes I can't believe me your own generosity. John, I'm here for the council. I know fair rent. Yeah? It's to your advantage, Curtis. I mean, this is a high-profile magazine. Yes. We're doing you a favor. Once word gets round that we're here, your restaurant will be on the media map. You'll have black celebrities everywhere. Hmm. I charge extra for celebrities. Oh, come <laughs> on. Be reasonable. All right. <clears throat> Make me um, reconsider. Um, High-profile capitalist business. Celebrity clients. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Profits from the black community. All right. Two hundred pound a week. <laughs> so where's Beverly? With our father buying up paint and all kind of thing for the full full office. <laughs> oh, before you drink your tea, Miss Mac, I have a present for you. Oh, you shouldn't have bothered, Mrs. Pinnock. Just a little something to remind you back home. Oh, what is it? Appleton Golden Rum? Blue Mountain Fresh Coffee? Oh. Wood carving from Negril. <laughs> a piece of sugar kill. Remember we used to eat this all the time? <laughs> yes. But now I used to take a line. <laughs> <laughs> so oh, how is the social club these days? Me dear, since you're gone, Mrs. Aka take over the whole place. She's going to get a surprise when she find out I come back. Uh, not she. She said the whole place buzzing. Say, Jamaica pack up Mrs. Pinup and she back for good. Jamaica pack me up. Oh, you know how she get everything back to front. Oh. <laughs> Beverly must be glad you're back. I'm giving her time to get used to the idea. You mean the whole world know you're back and your daughter in the dark? It's not my fault. From the time I reach you vex with me, you see me trial? Look at the girl face. Hello, Miss Mack. Hello, Beverly. Don't bother cut your eye for me. You mustn't blame your mother, Beverly. After all, she did get you 10 pounds off the rent. 
It's you push it up. Look how the house tidy. Since she arrived, all she does is look about your welfare. Thank you never hurt nobody. <laughs> Miss Vance, tell her what the man say. What man? Your boss at the council. She bumped into him with her tea trolley. It wasn't easy, Beverly. I had to use all my influence. First, I give him a big mug and fill it up with steam. Then, to sweeten him up, I give him an extra McVitie. After that, <laughs> tell her what the man say. <laughs> him say that you was very highly regarded. And if you ever want your job back... Stop right there, Miss Mack. I'm not interested. Him say you'd have to start lower down this time, but tell him to go... Oh, I'm sorry, Miss Mack. <laughs> All you have to do is phone him secretary and ask nicely. I talked to she already. She waiting for you to call. Well, thank you, Mum, for getting me a job I don't want and messing up one I do want. After you tell me to hush my moat, I never say a word. You don't have to. You just stand there and the next minute I have a rent I can't afford, no budget and all the decorating to do myself. You see? Look, I am not interested in the council. I'm a journalist. Stop interfering. Me? Interfering? I never know a thing about this till Miss Mack come and tell me. Hello, Miss Mack. Hello. I hear you was going to sweet up Beverly Bass. <laughs> Yo, hmm? your friend just phoned. Gail, where is she? She said to tell you she's going to wait until the office dry. What's she talking about? The only way to get rid of this damp is to set fire to the place. Well, she says she's allergic to wet paint. Anyway, I'll check you later. Curtis, I don't believe this place. Mm -hmm. It's funny. Everybody said that. They said, Curtis, rent me a place. It's so cheap. I don't believe it. Do you tell them the lights don't work, the wood's rotten, and the rising dam's gone up and come down again? You're funny enough. <laughs> Hello, mind if I have a look round? The place is already taken. Just a quick once over. OK. How much is Mr Jar charging? Oh, too much. Anyone can see this is a dump. I'll show you the main feature, shall I? Free air conditioning. Look out, trampoline. Design feature light fittings. And if you stay around long enough, you'll meet Rodney. Rodney? Office rat. Oh, you reach already? Your daughter's just been showing me round, Mrs Pinnock. You're right, it's definitely a section six. Mum, what are you up to? Don't say I don't do nothing for you, Beverly. Mr Green is from the council, come to take money off the rent. Have you really? Well, anyone can see this is a dump. We shouldn't be paying anything. I couldn't agree with you more. Two hundred in charge. Oh, that's extortionate. You hear that? Extortion. Tell her how much she's going to pay now. Nothing. What? It's not worth anything without a good deal of repairs. That's fantastic. Oh, Mum! I'll have to close it down. <laughs> Beverly, I never know rent office have so much power. They don't, Mum. He was from health and safety. Them council people, you can't tell them one from the other. Once I go there to get a new dustbin, I thought, boy, them interviewing for everything these days. When I realize I nearly get a job cleaning street. See, Beverly, them take on anybody. <laughs> Just make me fool, Miss Mark. I already did. You get your job back? She got her office back. That woman know everybody. You do have something to tell Beverly? Me and your father, we're back for good. I know. <laughs> I didn't say a word. Miss Mack. Mm -hmm. I couldn't settle living so far from everybody. Nobody business to chat. And the people them so uppity. None of them like her. Say she too bossy. Why you don't go and talk to Aisha? See if you can learn some sense. <laughs> she didn't miss you. Get out. <laughs> Not a soul out there mean anything to me. Just me and your father. You're back now. I'll help you find a place. I hope you don't mind if I pop over sometime, Beverly. Sure, Mum. Make sure you're feeding Aisha. 
I'm I, 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 not interfering. I know you have your own life to live. You cope on your own for a year. You don't need a mother. Oh, Mom. When you're ready, pass me the needle and thread. <laughs> I wouldn't want it any other way. Your mother tell me not to say anything. She wanted to tell you herself. Henry! Talk to you later, Dad. She's changed. She's actually changed. Jamaica's made her appreciate her family more, want to be closer. You're taking it well. I thought you'd be annoyed. It's what I've waited for my whole life. Mum treating me like an adult. Me and Grandad were down there riding. Why? I'm glad they're back. In fact, I'm going to help them find a place. Somewhere near. Not too near. Maybe the end of the Victoria line. See them once a week. Yeah, but I thought they told you they got a place. What? Where? Mrs. Bradley's house. They're moving in across the road. <laughs> And this new series of Us Girls continues at half past eight next Wednesday here on BBC One.